I'd like to welcome to Paris Live as a special guest, Dagmara Bojenko, who is a professional photographer. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. Now, let's begin with this uh, You and Me wedding salon. I just want to know why you chose to be involved in this particular event. Yes, so this is a wedding fair or a salon, as we say in French, but it's technically called a festival, so Festival You and Me. Um, the difference is that uh, with, for example, a salon like uh, at uh, Porte de Versailles that's quite big, very a lot of people and a lot of um, uh, businesses as well, is that it's uh, this one is much more personal. It's catered basically to the type of client that comes to speak to uh, their photographer, their caterer, florist, all that, but directly and to have a real meeting with them. So not just to pass by the stand and get a flyer or get a promotion uh, for, <laughs> because that's often why a lot of clients go is to get the best deal uh, to these bigger events. Uh, whereas with a smaller event like Festival You and Me, the reason I chose it is because um, it is basically uh, oriented towards clients who want a connection with their, um, how do you call that, wedding vendor? Yeah. <laughs> wedding vendor. Wedding planner. Uh, or... or wedding planner, photographer. So in my case, to have a, a real discussion and to uh, see if we can connect on more than just the aesthetics of the image. Because even though obviously a lot of clients choose their photographer for their wedding or for any other event based on what they see online, the images that they like they really also should be looking at the personality of the vendor, of the photographer, and to make a decision based on how they feel and whether that person will really be a, a good uh, addition to their event. Now, you've just won the Expatriates Magazine Wedding Photographer of the Year Award, so congratulations to you. Thank what you. What do you think is your edge when it comes to photography? What is your thing? So that's a really difficult question <laughs> that I always have a hard time answering, but I'm going to try uh, because I think that the edge is so dependent on who's looking, right? And that's the case in everything when we talk about image. Um, and so for me, uh, the most important thing is for when a potential client uh, or an existing client sees my work or meets me, they feel like they want me to be a part of their moment. Uh, and I think that differentiates me from some photographers, not all. Uh, many photographers look for the connection, of course, because it's important to get a, to do good work is to have a relatively good connection with your client and to put them at ease, to make them feel um, like opening up to you. But beyond that, I'm really looking for almost these, this idea of becoming friends with every client that I have. And this year, well, last year, I guess, last season, I really feel like most of my clients, we had these amazing connections where I cried at their weddings. One wedding, I really cried a lot. I think the guests were wondering what was happening, but I still managed to get very good photos. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, but also uh, became friends to the point of being invited to their birthday. They came to my birthday just last week. Uh, other friends uh, send me messages. Now, I say friends, it just slipped out because they're clients, but they've really become close to me. And I think that for some photographers, that's not the most important thing. And that's okay. Uh, for them, it's really a business. But for me, it is a business. But beyond that, it's the way I want to live my work. So to have that exchange and to continue the relationship with my clients. Mm. Now, you grew up in a Polish family in Canada. Uh, you were exposed to different languages at a young age. Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering if that helped you or does it help you today being a photographer in Paris, which is quite a cosmopolitan place? I think it helps me in general anyway to understand my clients better uh, when they come from different uh, cultures 
or just different types of families. Because uh, when we meet clients, especially for personal events, um, so weddings or family families, there are dynamics that are so different. And when we're not exposed to a lot of variety in our own personal life, it's harder to understand and to adapt to those situations. So I think coming from a Polish family, but growing up in Canada, traveling quite a lot for 10 years, and then coming here and adapting to a new environment, it really allowed me to understand different ways of living life and to having family dynamics and uh, all this traditions. So that helps for sure. And then specifically to Paris, I do work with a lot of uh, mixed couples. So people who are, you know, one partner will be French and then the other can come from anywhere. I have a lot of Brazilian uh, clients, Portuguese Uh, I had some Polish clients as well. Uh, people from all over, really, who who like the idea that I can speak several languages and be able to communicate with their guests uh, on a more personal level. And then also to understand their relationship and the specificities of where they come from. Mm. And uh, you've been in France for quite a few years now, covering mm -hmm. weddings, but also, as you've mentioned, family events. Mm -hmm. um, and I was wondering how attitudes towards photography for these types of events have changed or evolved. I mean, we've seen, uh, for example, uh, the rise in gay weddings, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm just wondering how maybe you've observed the changes in society when it comes to this type of photography? So that's a good question. And definitely there's a lot of evolution, like you said, even with the uh, same sex weddings that have increased because now they can get married, which is great. Um, but also oddly, I mean, maybe not so oddly, but people are getting married less. So there are less weddings. That's true. Yeah. Uh, but the weddings that are happening tend to be happening later on in life. Um, so a lot of my clients have children already. And so it's a choice they make to celebrate uh, with their family and close ones uh, as opposed to starting their lives together. So that's something I've really noticed in my work, uh, that most of my clients have already been together for five to ten years if, if they don't have children or some already do have one, two kids. And they just want to really reunite both sides of the family and, and celebrate that. Uh, so it's a little bit different in terms of uh, how they envision their lives together. I always ask my clients, what's your plan for, you know, your vision of your family or your couple for the next few years? And a lot of them, they just say, well, to continue the way we are. And that, I think, wasn't always the case, as we know. I mean, uh, originally marriage was to uh, reunite two families for you know, different reasons. <laughs> and, then, uh, and then even until not so long ago, it was really the moment where you could begin to create a family and to live together, whereas... Now I think that's really been changing quite a lot. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. and, and families recomposing, as they say in, in French. Uh, uh, so, yes, society has changed a lot in, exactly. in the last uh, few years. And in today's culture, we're seeing a lot more of this, uh, you mentioned Instagram, but this selfie culture mm -hmm. using mobile phones, which mm -hmm. often are of, of very good quality now, yes. the very expensive ones. Uh, but people seem to be very concerned about having this perfect social media image. Now mm -hmm. it's creating a lot of pressure for people, not always good pressure. Um, how has the social media and this type of selfie culture affected your work as a photographer? What do you make of this trend? So on one hand, I think that the fact that people are more sensitive to images and they are looking for more aesthetics in their images could work in my favor for my business because they're looking for photos that are more professional, that they don't necessarily want just some, you know, the phone photos for their wedding, although there is always that from family members. But uh, so that could be a positive thing. And I'm not rejecting the whole idea of uh, people being interested in image and, and having nice photos, of course. Uh, that's my job and that's what, what I love. But I am concerned about um, the the importance of image in people's lives of uh, posed moments. So basically creating a moment that doesn't actually exist because I find that a lot of people on their social media, and I think we all 
you know, could uh, be victims of that is, you know, you take a photo that of, an, of a moment of your food or of whatever as if it's the most beautiful moment, but it isn't. It's just, it, it's, it's a tiny little moment in your day that doesn't really mean anything. And it's a shame if that's what you're concentrating on and what you're looking at when you're looking at other people's social media and getting stressed that your life is not good enough or beautiful enough or that you're not successful enough. Um, so I find that's really a big concern. And I'm very interested in trying to change, especially young people's um, vision of uh, selfies or of using their cameras, because I'm not against them using cameras. And actually, I did a recently... Um, a workshop with youth in a in a high school uh, of immigrant youth that just arrived about six months to a year ago in France. Uh, but this can be done with any youth group um, where I did a photo workshop with them. I did you know, a bit of a class with them where I explained lighting and angles and uh, perspective. But then we went out and we did a project together around the school and did photos together for them to practice. And they had a weekend uh, project to document their weekend and to present these photos. And the idea behind that was to get them thinking differently of what it means to take a photo of their every day. So not to go away from the Instagram posed moment and to start appreciating the unposed, messy uh, things that you wouldn't want to show because they're really valuable and they show your life, your history, your family, your traditions, especially for people coming from abroad who sometimes tend to want to um, not forget their culture, obviously, but integrate so much into French culture that they'll be a little bit ashamed of where they come from or they won't really put it forward as much. And I I'd like to encourage youth to be more creative in that way. Mm. Great. That oh, sounds very positive. Very positive. Thank well, um, thank you very much for being my guest on the Paris thank Live you. show. It's been a pleasure. And I wish you all the best for the festival you and me this weekend. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank Have you. a great day. Thank you. Thank you.